Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is the first video of a new training series I'm doing on uh, learning Adobe Photoshop Elements 11. And the reason why I'm doing uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 is because it's very much like Photoshop. It's like a watered down Photoshop and a lot of people can't afford Photoshop. Photoshop costs upwards of a thousand dollars and um, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 runs less than seventy dollars and I'm told it has as far as a photographer's point of view has eighty percent of the functionality of full-blown Photoshop so if you don't have the money to spend on Photoshop CS6 or the Creative Cloud which is a monthly subscription um, by all means uh, get um, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 and um, you know watch my training videos this is the first one and what we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to take you from the beginning getting the cards or getting the photographs off the SD card and getting them in the organizer that's what this video is going to be and then in subsequent videos we're actually going to be editing the photographs and there's all it's a very powerful program despite costing you know less than seventy dollars so there's a lot of stuff we're going to be doing if you watched any of my Lightroom training those videos were 15 to 20 minutes long. My goal is to try to make these elements videos a lot shorter. Um, I talk a lot. I know I've never met a microphone I haven't liked, but I'm going to do my best to make these more bite size and um, rather have more videos shorter, um, so that you know, because everyone's busy and they don't maybe they don't want to learn this part of that right now. They want to learn something else and they get jumped to that specific topic. Before I start, if you guys could visit my website, anthonymorganti.com, um, I have all kinds of photography, how-to videos and articles. I'm adding to it every day. Everything is free. Uh, stop by. Also, if you could do me a huge favor, I'd really appreciate this, is if you could subscribe to my videos on YouTube, and if you could comment on the videos and like the videos, I'd really appreciate it. It helps my ranking when people do searches on YouTube if I have a lot of likes and I have a lot of comments and I have a lot of subscribers and I'm really um, I want to help everyone with their photography so um, I'd really appreciate if you did that okay let's get started um, we're gonna start as I mentioned right from the beginning I have fo uh, Photoshop ele elements in my dock uh, click to start when you first start it for the first time it's gonna come up with this welcome screen and um, you could either go right into the photo editor or go into the organizer. If you click this gear up here, you could choose whether you want this welcome screen to start. Um, you could, you know, go right into the organizer when you click that icon down there, or you could go right into the photo editor. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it as is right now. Um, so we're going to go into the organizer, and it'll open up uh, the organizer in um, Elements. And as you can see, I have nothing in there. So we're going to import the photograph. As you noticed before, I had an SD card in there. So we're going to click in, import from a camera or card reader. Now, if you had it on your hard drive or something, you just click those. It's going to be very similar to this. I'm going to go to the standard dialog first. This is the standard dialog that will come up when you first um, import um, your photograph. And um, so it's going to give you the location now it knows that I have a card in the in the computer so it's already defaulted to that SD card slot if it doesn't click the drop down and pick where your media is um, it's asking me do I want it at this location um, in my root directory under pictures and I do now it's going to say to create a subfolder when you first start elements it's going to come up with uh, the shot date the date you shot which seems logical then you could have all your photographs by the date you know in folders by the date you shot them but I'm gonna recommend you don't do it this way because in a year two years from now when you have hundreds of folders you're gonna say wow I remember that butterfly I took I wanna find that you know I took that one picture and you're gonna forget what date it was and you're gonna have to it's gonna take you forever to search so what I'm gonna do and I suggest you do is do a custom name and give it something uh, descriptive these are pictures of Niagara Falls so I'm just gonna call it Niagara Falls 
Now the individual individual files you could rename those too. Um, I'm not going to, but you could. You could name them something more descriptive. If these were all pictures of flowers, you could write you know all of roses. You could write you know rose picture number one. It's going to increment them as you go. But I'm not going to rename them, so we're going to leave it at that. Now the delete options is something that I would recommend you just copy them and don't delete the originals. That way, um, if something goes wrong during the process or you accidentally delete them before you backed them up, you still have them on the SD card. Now, if you're brave and you don't want to do it that way, you could copy them, verify that they were copied, and then delete the originals. Or a lot quicker would be just copy them and then they delete them as they copy them. As I mentioned, uh, you're living dangerously if you do that. Um, I'm going to pick uh, this one. I'm not going to delete the originals. And what I'll do is once I back them up to a, an external hard drive and then I back them up to the cloud, then I will delete them off the SD card. If you pick this advanced dialog down here, it, uh, you could uh, you know, pick individual shots that you don't want or you want to, to bring into your uh, catalog. Um, also, you know, it comes up with what we already did. We have a custom name. I named it Niagara Falls. I'm not renaming the files. If there were people in here and you had some red eyes, you could automatically fix the red eyes on the import. Uh, you could suggest, it will allow it to suggest photo stacks to you, which basically is just a way to sort them. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, group name, custom tag. So you could have tag them as they come in. I'm not going to do that. But if you wanted to, you could. Um, if you wanted to import them into a specific album, you could do that too. Um, we, we could do that. Um, you know, I don't have any albums set up, but I'm not going to do that right now because as I mentioned, I'm trying to make these videos shorter and already I'm blabbing on and on and on. Um, we, um, we're going to use the basic metadata template. Um, that's the only one there. And here, this probably won't be there when you do it, but um, put your name as the creator and put a copyright as the year that you're doing this. That way each, it gets embedded in each file, in the metadata of each file that you created it and you own the copyright on it. That's why if anyone stole this photograph, it's still embedded in the metadata that it's yours. So do that. Then we click Get Media down here in the bottom right hand corner. I don't know if you could see that because my website name is in the way. But right here, Get Media. It's going to import them. I only did 10 because I'm trying to do it quickly, as I mentioned. And um, it imported them. And this is the grid view as we're looking at each shot. If I wanted to look at one close up, I could just click on it. And it'll show the shot. If I want to go back to the grid view, just click up here and going back to the grid view there. Now, you might want to tag these. A lot of people like to tag their um, photographs. Now. Um, you can see I have six photographs of butterflies and there's already a keyword here of nature. So I'm going to, all you got to do is grab it and drag it over to a photograph and I tag this butterfly as nature. Now a quicker way is if you have, a, like I have all a bunch in a row here, is you click the first one in the row and you hold the shift key down and click the last one. That selected all of them. Now I could just grab the tag and drop it on any of them and it will tag all of them as you can see. Now I have three photographs here of the actual um, Niagara Falls so I want to tag those but I don't like any of these tags so I'm going to create my own and you click this plus sign here and I'm going to call it Niagara Falls And I don't want it in the nature category. I want it in the photography category. And I, I could put a note there, maybe the date I was there, which, you know, I off the top of my head I don't remember. But you could put the date or you could put a note to who you were with or something that you want to put there. Click OK. Now I have the Niagara Falls tag underneath my photography tag. And I want to tag these three. Uh, photographs. So I'll click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one. They're all selected. Just drag that tag. They're tagged. Now up top here we have a um, way we could categorize the media uh, that we just imported. If there were uh, photographs of people, I could sort the people uh, and you could actually name them. Um, the organizer has facial recognition software in it. So you could pick one person, let's say you got Aunt Martha there, you pick Aunt Martha and you write 
This is Aunt Martha. Find her in all the photographs. Uh, organizer will go through all the photographs, find out who it thinks Aunt Martha is, and tag it with Aunt Martha. It will then ask you, it will show you them all, and this is, it'll say, you know, basically here, I, all these I think are Aunt Martha. You know, let me know if, if any of them are wrong. And then you just go through, there'll be little check boxes on the ones that aren't Aunt Martha. It makes mistakes. You know, it's not perfect. And then you could do that with all the people that happen to be in the photographs you imported. Um, in this case here, this is a place. So I'm going to tag it with, a, with uh, I'm going to use this place category. Um, comes up with a map over here, and obviously there's no media yet. So we go down at the bottom, it says add places. We click here, and it shows a map of North America. Go in this search box, and this was Niagara Falls, Ontario. Click enter. It will come down with suggestions. In this case, it only suggested one city, and I was right. And it's saying, do you want to drop the uh, the photos right here? And that's good enough for me. If I was getting fussy, I could I could take some of these uh, these butterfly ones maybe and put them exactly where the butterfly conservatory was, and these falls ones right where the you know where we were standing. But for the sake of doing this re relatively quickly, I'm going to take it right where it is and hit this checkbox. And there they are. They're tagged there. Um, we're done with this uh, box here. We click done. Now back in this view in places it shows um, where on the map it is if I had some photographs I live in Buffalo New York if I had some photographs of Buffalo mixed in here and I clicked on that one this map would move and it would show me where in Buffalo I took the photograph and then I click back on this one I go back to Niagara Falls so the map basically shows you where you are events are very similar you're just gonna um, do some events you could click add an event here and it will sh be you know it could be um you know my wife's birthday party something like that and all the photographs that are in my library that were from my wife's birthday party i could put into the an event tab that's my wife's birthday party and that's it that's um in a nutshell that's i think what you need to know in the organizer how to get your photos in and how to tag them if you want them tagged. Um, edit the metadata by putting your name in there and the copyright. And um, if you want to categorize them, um, places, events, put people's names, uh, you could do that. Um, that's it for this video. In the next episode, we're going to actually start editing some of the photographs. And um, then we're gonna, it's going to be a very um, in-depth a step by step process. So there's going to be quite a few videos I think. I I didn't outline the whole thing yet, but I would imagine there's going to be about 10 to 15 um videos and all of those are going to be in the editor to show you how to use the editor. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Look for that in episode 2. Um again, if you could subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, uh like uh the videos and comment on the videos I'd really appreciate it and come over to the website um, you know it's only been going I'm really happy with how it's been going so far it's been I think less than two months as I'm recording this and I get um, several hundred visitors a day so I'm real happy with uh, the way it's coming along so thanks again and I'll talk to you guys soon